Dear Democrats, Liberals, and Progressives, Do you remember how bad the Republicans were in 2008? You know, those die-hard Fox News watching, war-mongering religious crazies. The ones that could never admit that the Iraq war was a mistake. They seem to have no problem with the administration and fringing on our civil liberties at home while we cause death and destruction abroad. But if you forced yourself to listen to Fox News and right-wing radio, those guys made every excuse and apology imaginable and then tried to twist everything around to blame it on the Democrats. And even after eight years of Bush, they were ready to coronate John McCain. And you want to just scream at these people. Like, what is wrong with you? How could you not see through this obvious BS? Well, that was 2008. And now, it's 2016. And congratulations. Now you're those same gullible fools that you used to hate. And maybe you're thinking, but I read the New York Times, and I listen to NPR every morning. Sorry, but that's just professional propaganda. Those outlets might as well be an extension of the Democratic Party. They're a bunch of phony, rich, white, elitist liberals that think they're morally superior to everyone and that they're such awesome humanitarians. I listen to NPR because I'm so intellectual and sophisticated. Please, they sound like they're run by Obama's press secretary. They might as well be reading off of government approved scripts and probably are. Seriously, how many angry phone calls do you think NPR has gotten from the Obama White House? Yeah, uh, you guys really need to tone it down over there before we have to uh, uh, reevaluate your funding. You know, I, I expect these kind of reports out of Breitbart, but not from you. I don't want to be in a position to uh, start restricting your access. The liberal media, which did a somewhat reasonable job during the Bush regime, has turned into quite the letdown during the age of Obama. Now their role is completely flipped from offense to defense. Instead of holding Obama accountable, they became his best ally. They covered for him, made excuses for him. They even began branding his critics as racists. What? You don't agree with his policies? Well, it can't be because his ideas are shitty, so you obviously must be some sort of white supremacist. Eight years of hope and change. But it was really just more of the same, wasn't it? He had a fair chance, but let's be honest. Obama has been a tremendous disappointment. We doubled the debt and have nothing to show for it. We've destabilized the Middle East even further and created a monster in the process by arming moderate rebels, which later became known as ISIS. Obamacare was a monumental flop, and there were a number of scandals that made Watergate look amateur by comparison. There was Fast and Furious. It all began with an ATF program called Fast and Furious, in which the United States government allowed guns to be smuggled to Mexican drug runners in order to find out where Mexican drug runners were getting their guns. <laughs> it turned out to be, it turned out to be for more government. It actually, uh, circle of life. On the bright side, we did end up finding one of them when it was used to kill a U.S. Border Patrol agent. Congress has, for the past year or so now, been asking for thousands of documents relating to this no program, oh, that program switcheroo thing that the Attorney General did. Attorney General uh, Holder has refused to give the documents. Yesterday, the House Oversight Committee voted to hold Holder in contempt. President Obama has entered the fray and asserted executive privilege over the documents that have been requested by Congressman Issa. Oh, no, you did! Oh, damn! Executive privilege on oh. So here's the problem. It turns out that during the Bush administration, executive privilege was seen by the Democrats as a refuge of scoundrels. There's been a tendency on the part of this administration to, to try to hide behind executive privilege every time there's something uh, a little shaky that's taking place. And I think you know, the administration would be best served by coming clean on this. The Democrats are now in the position of having to defend an executive action 
that they thoroughly denounced during the Bush administration, not five years prior. There was the IRS targeting. After very careful consideration, I have decided to follow my counsel's advice and not testify or answer any of the questions today. Congressman Jim Jordan is still pursuing, among others, these impeachment hearings. Uh, but I guess uh, he's a no-show, right? Yeah, well, I mean, frankly, Neil, if, uh, if I was him, I wouldn't show up either. When you allow 422 backup tapes to be destroyed, containing potentially 24,000 emails, and you do that with three preservation orders in place, three orders to preserve all documents and communications, and two subpoenas in place, and you allow that to happen, I wouldn't want to come in front of Congress either. These kinds of things keep on surfacing, in part because you and your TV station will promote them. But, but, but when don't folks you actually are unanswered questions, Bill, when you actually look at the stuff, there have been multiple hearings on it. No, no corruption there at all. No, that's not what I'm flat. saying. That's actually no, no. But I the, want to know what you're saying. You're the leader absolutely. of the country. Absolutely. You're saying no corruption. No, None. No. There were some. There were some boneheaded decisions. Boneheaded out decisions of, out of a but local no office. mass corruption. Not even mass corruption, not even a smidgen of corruption, obviously. Okay. The NSA spying. Good to be with you, Sean. And if you if you see the president, can you give him a message? Well, yeah, yeah. I'm oh, in I'll Philadelphia be seeing him sometime tonight. later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's, the, here's the message for the president. I'm in Philadelphia. He doesn't need to look at my phone records. I'll just go ahead and let him know where I am tonight in case he's looking <laughs> for me, okay? The, the only place they won't be able to find you is on MSNBC. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, would you then say it's broad sweeping, the least effective method possible, and the most intrusive on our rights? Yeah, and I think the thing is, is that really this is what our founding fathers fought the revolution over. At least one of the points is they objected to general warrants. These were warrants that didn't specify who was going to be searched, so the British soldiers could go from house to house. Now we're going from computer to computer, not of people who are suspected of being terrorists, of every American. They're going through a billion phone calls a day, and from your phone records, they can track your movements. That's why I was joking about telling the president I'm in Philadelphia. Of course, Benghazi is a crude and disgusting video sparked outrage throughout the Muslim world. Now, I have made it clear that the United States government had nothing to do with this video, and I believe its message must be rejected by all who respect our common humanity. No, it it's more than that, because as Susan Rice goes out and tells the world that it was a spontaneous demonstration no. off a of videotape, but you're... Your Bill. commanders and the Secretary of Defense know it's a terror attack. No, Bill, just Bill, as an American, Bill. I'm just and, confused. And, and, and that's just some of the major ones. But to be fair, Obama did help move this country forward on a few minor social issues and left us with some unforgettable visuals in the process. Ladies and gentlemen, the Obama legacy. But let's give this lame duck a break. The point was to illustrate what you're not hearing from the liberal media. The reality is, Obama has been just as bad as Bush. And the media is just as bad as they were then. They've only switched sides. The truth is that we've all been conned by the corrupt establishment and their corporate media. And Hillary has been selected by them to be our next choice. Kind of like McCain in 2008, she's really an extension of the current administration. And she's also all they have. The Democratic Party has been in a serious crisis because they virtually have no recognizable talent under the age of 65. It's Obama and that's it. Most of the other big names are well past their prime. If it wasn't for Hillary, all the Democrats had was Joe Biden or old retread from 2004, John Kerry. Things were so bad, a 74-year-old Bernie Sanders had to switch his party affiliation from independent to Democrat just to give Hillary a challenge in the primaries. And speaking of age, the Clintons haven't been looking so well lately. Bill is fading fast. And it looks like Hillary might be hiding something potentially serious. When she hit her head, she had to wear these prism glasses right, when she came out. Right. That is brain damage. And remember, if anything happens, 
we're gonna be stuck with this guy. The Democratic Party is old, broken, corrupt, and exposed. Their chairwoman, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, resigned in shame on the eve of the convention, along with some of their top staffers. And new chair, Donna Brazil, could be gone any day now. In fact, probably gone by the time you've watched this video. Between WikiLeaks, undercover videos from Project Veritas, and any number of lingering scandals, this party's party is over. And good riddance. The Democratic Party is in need of a serious shakeup. This is no longer the party of Jefferson and JFK. This is the party of global government socialism and social justice warriors. They keep moving the platform further to the left, but what they really need to do is get outside the box. It's time to reinvent themselves, get younger and fresher, build a whole new brand and identity. However, Hillary is the epitome of Washington and Wall Street corruption and represents the last of the old guard. She is also the establishment's last desperate attempt to keep their power, their control, and the status quo. On the other hand, this guy isn't perfect. But at least he's a straight shooting loyal American that loves his country. Hillary is a phony, two-faced career politician that has been engulfed in a lifetime of corruption and scandals. This woman feels entitled, craves the power. This guy would rather be out on the golf course. But someone needed to stand up and save America from the two crime families trying to steal the election. Sure, he's got some tax issues and some minor misogynistic misbehavior, but this woman funneled foreign donations, a pay-to-play, through her corrupt foundation while in charge of the State Department. She even set up a secret private server to conduct official business, including the exchanging of highly classified material. And as soon as it was discovered, she tried to destroy all the evidence. She said that the reason she used the private server is for convenience, and that she only had one uh, device. She used 13 Blackberries, let me finish, and five iPads. This is somebody who is absolutely disqualified from becoming president. They destroyed Blackberries with hammers in the State Department. That's not what we won the presidency. Evan, 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 hold on. Can you fact check that? Hang on, 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 Evan Perez. Hammers, fact check that for me, please, on the fly. Uh, yes, they did, Brooke. Uh, as so. as, uh, <laughs> as you mentioned, there were uh, 13 devices, mobile devices, and five iPads that uh, the FBI said that you know, in some way, were used with with her private email server, and they did, in some cases, just destroy them with hammers when they were done using them. And that's just the very tip of the iceberg of all of the scandals, because we don't have all day to go over all of it. Beware of the hype, because Donald Trump isn't as bad as you might believe. They don't like him because he's an outsider, because he's anti-establishment, because he wants to drain the swamp in Washington. Not that he doesn't come with his share of risk. However, what we do know is that Hillary Clinton is a guaranteed catastrophe for the country. We're talking corruption on a level never before seen, and probably the beginning of World War III with Russia. She led the way in Libya. She's trying to start a, an air war with Russia over Syria, which means if Hillary gets elected, we're kind of going to war with Russia, folks. A nuclear armed power. So be careful with what you've heard from the liberal media. Some of them are really bad people. Some of them are just useful idiots. The rest of them just follow their talking points and do what they're told. Either way, don't be played for fools. Thanks for listening. Peace and love.